student scored a 12 and this student scored more than 10 and so did this student how did these guys achieve this i'll tell you that in a few minutes so what really is the advanced vocabulary for self-pip writing and speaking and how can you implement it well if you see their official marking scheme this is from their official website you need advanced proficiency in workplace and community context if you use that you score a self-pip level 12 which is what you need. Now, how do we practically demonstrate that? Well, the best way is to look at the actual examiner marking scheme for speaking first, then we'll look at what these terms mean, we'll look at example sentences, the best words and phrases, and we'll also look at the writing part and the marking scheme for that too. So here, when you see vocabulary, this is where a lot of people fail. A lot of you think it's just simple vocab, but this video is going to surprise you as to what these terms really mean. It says, use a very broad range of concrete and abstract language, which is a lot to digest. Let's get into the elaboration of that because there's too much that this entails. Now, if you want to look at the definition, you can. It's on the screen. However, I'll tell you what it really means. There are three parts to this marking criteria. The first one is concrete language, then abstract language, and then the combined usage. So concrete language has to do with words and phrases that define the real thing, the specific thing. Have a look at this sentence. It is very advanced, so we'll go slowly. The crystal clear water shimmered under the bright midday sun. So the water shimmered under the bright midday sun. In other words, you can say the water shined under the bright midday sun. You have to use good adjectives. Shimmered uh, is a verb, advanced. Bright is an adjective and crystal clear is an adjective. So the more adjectives you use, the better it is. However, if I were to put it in simple words, this means the water shined under the sun. Of course, to make it advanced, you want to use more advanced descriptions, adjectives, and so on. But this is what concrete language means. This points out to the tangible, real things, actions, or how things are done. No feelings or emotions involved. When we talk about abstract language, that's where the feelings come in. So it says, her unwavering courage inspired everyone around her. So this is the unwavering courage. This is the addition where we're talking about feeling. She was so brave and she had so much. And what it did is it inspired everyone around her. If you say that it lit up a feeling of inspiration in other people, that's another example of abstract language talking more about emotions. Have a look at a combined usage here. So it says, walking through the old library, this is concrete, right? Simple, old library is a real thing. He felt a profound sense of nostalgia. This is the feeling now, nostalgia meaning homesick or remembering something and wonder. So his thoughts, this is the abstract language. Again, this is not, wonder and nostalgia are not real things. They're feelings, which is why it's called abstract. Now let's have a look at some practical real life examples you can use in your actual speaking exam. If you score seven, you're probably speaking like this. This is the level you need for a nine and this is the level you need for a 12. So you have sentences, you can take a screenshot, you can pause the video to read it. I'm going to give you a few of them. So for a seven, you basically, like most people, would use concrete language. I have a car and drive to work every day. Very simple, nothing fancy. For a nine, you would say, I recently purchased a reliable car. Recently and reliable. Basically, you're using more adjectives and you're defining the event more. You're giving more feelings here. That's what's we, what we call abstract language. And then you say to commute to work, simple language. Now for a 12, you need very advanced sentences. Now this is a little longer. We're describing it in more detail with feelings and abstract language. Every morning, that's okay, that's concrete. I navigate the bustling city streets. So this is the feeling. This is how you're describing the city. In my fuel efficient hybrid car, appreciating the nuances of urban life. Here you have the bustling city, the fuel efficient hybrid car, and then nuances of the urban life, which is the small differences or small subtle differences in the urban life. You're describing three things. Now this is overdoing it, which you need as per the marking criteria. In some places, you cannot speak like this in all sentences. In fact, to score the maximum mark, you need a mixture of complex and simple sentences. So don't let this worry you like you have to speak 
like this throughout the entirety. You can use a few of these sentences, long descriptions, but you need to use them to score the maximum mark. And hey, if you're thinking I just need a 9, still use the language you need for a 12 because you will make grammar mistakes, task response mistakes, and others. So you want to use the best one, and of course the mistakes might reduce you to a 9. Now you may remember the reviews I was showing you earlier. These students who scored really good CLB for their Canadian immigration used our CELPIF 15 hour course, which is right now at a 20% discount. It includes mock tests, videos, class lectures, worksheets, and a lot more. You also get free feedback on your writing and speaking, plus you get the answers for reading and listening. Check it out, 65,000 students have already enrolled. What are you waiting for? Do this for your preparation and a good guaranteed CLB score. Now, let's go on to a review of what we just studied. We studied that we have to use a combination of abstract and concrete language. We have to be descriptive. Basically, if I tell you in simple words what you got to do, it's simply using a good description with adjectives, define the feelings and exaggerate them. That's all it is. And it's very easy to do in speaking with your tone. Finally, express complex ideas with some things like using words like freedom, justice, happiness, integrity when you're explaining something. For example, if I'm talking about me eating ice cream, it's simple, right? Justice, integrity do not fit there, but happiness does. So I could say I was simply elated when I had that final piece or scoop of ice cream because I knew at this time I was going to cheat and not think of my workout routine, which was a bliss just reminiscing it. So things like that are just exaggerated feelings and you can look at words like happiness, integrity, ethics, health, and so on to think about the actual descriptions. Moving on to the next part of the vocabulary, this is the second thing they mention in again self of speaking. So to score a 12, as you can see here, you need to use a broad range of figures of speech and idioms. Now, one thing I'll tell you is if you want to know the actual list of idioms, the best idioms to use overall, check out my link in the description for my idiomatic expressions video, because that needs another video. There's a difference between idioms and idiomatic expressions. So check out that video in the description. But for now, I'll go over this and explain what this means. You can check out the elaboration right here. However, in detail, what it simply means is when you have idioms, metaphors and similes. These used in combination will give you the most marks. So what are idioms? They are things like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Obviously, we're not really talking about eggs or baskets. We're just making up uh, stories or you can, you can say it's um, unrealistic things to relate to realistic stuff. Metaphors are a little different. It says the classroom was a zoo during the recess. Now, it really was not a zoo, but it describes the real situation in more detail. So it looked like a zoo. It had the feelings of a zoo. Similarly are things where you describe similarities or analogies. For example, her smile was like sunshine on a rainy day. Her smile was so great, so wonderful, that it resembled sunshine on a rainy day. This is the analogy, the similarity. Now you can honestly stop with sunshine. Her smile was like sunshine. That's good enough. But when you say on a rainy day, you add more layers to it. And that is what I want to show you here. When you add more layers to your existing idioms, metaphors, and similes, you score better. For example, you won't see a huge, huge difference between levels 7 and 9, because these are very technical terms, but there is more description in a level 9. First, let's look at level 7. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Simple, simple idiom, right? Not much to it. But when we see this one, it says, after the long hike, this is one part of it, he was dead on his feet. So that he wasn't literally dead, it's a metaphor. And that is a result of the long hike. So here we have more of a cause and effect relationship and we're blending in our metaphors, similes and idioms in there. But if you look at a 12, this is even more descriptive. The politician's promises were nothing but smoke and mirrors deceiving the public. So smoke and mirrors is your idiom here. This is what the feeling was with politicians' promises, as is always the case. And then the result is deceiving the public. So there's more detail to it to give your idiom more expression and show what that really meant. If you look at sentence number four, time is a relentless thief, stealing moments we can never reclaim. 
Now here you have two descriptions. You have one of time being a relentless thief, this one. Now this is an idiom. This is not real. It's not really a thief. And then stealing moments, time is not really stealing something. It's a metaphor. So you have an idiom before the comma and a metaphor after the comma, making it highly complex. Once again, don't stress, you don't have to talk like this in every sentence. In fact, if you do, you will lose marks. You just need a few of these really good sentences in your entire speaking answers so you can score a level 12. With that said, we're now going to move on to the review and then your writing. First of all, how you expand on your vocabulary is by checking that video in the description on idiomatic expressions. So you want to work on that and also read, practice, basically listen to native speakers, watch TV shows, because that's where you mostly learn the usage. But make sure you're culturally aware. If you use something that is not appropriate or you're unsure of, it could be seen as something negative culturally. So if you're unsure, avoid it. But with that said, writing is the next big thing. And here things are going to become a little simpler, a little more understandable compared to that crazy idiom thing we just understood. In writing, it's fairly simple. You have one bullet point in the examiner marking criteria. Choose a specialized formal and common words to express your precise meaning. Now, what this means in action is right here. You can again pause the video, check out the definition. The example that I'm going to show you is of three main things you need to understand. The first one is the specialized words. These are simple words that are specific, not general. For example, the patient exhibited tachycardia and hypertension during the examination. Now this is what the patient experienced. These are medical terms, assuming we're talking about that. And these are specific terms. This and this is what the patient experienced. We want concrete, specialized words. Now, if you are too general, you lose marks. This is this happens with a lot of people. If you say something like the patient was having a lot of problems overall with his health, that's the problem. It's not concrete or specialized enough. So make sure to mostly keep it specialized. Then you want to keep it formal. Caveat to this, there's more detail. I'll tell you in the review at the end. We require additional resources to proceed with the proposed project. In this case, you can see the language is formal. You're not saying, hey, can you give us uh, more stuff? No, we're saying we require additional resources. So it's basically just professional, more formal. And then common words, she needs more time to finish the assignment. I don't need to explain this to you. You will automatically use common words, so don't worry about it. Focus more on specialized and formal words, common, flow in naturally. Here's what I mean. Number seven, now this is just common, right? He is a doctor and works in a hospital, very simple. She bought a new computer for her work, very simple. If we move to level nine, it says, he is a physician specializing in pediatric care at the local hospital. This is the advanced version of this one, the first sentence here. You can see here, we're talking about the physician, that's the job title, and he specializes in this, at this location. So you can see we're giving now more specific information and that's what they call a specialized context. But when we move to a level 12, it says he is a renowned cardiologist, more adjectives describing it further, whose research has advanced our understanding of heart diseases. So all you gotta understand here guys is the language is formal, research has advanced. It's not, we're not saying the research is just awesome. We're using formal language. So that's one difference. It is more descriptive. We're talking about the cardiologist and what has he helped us with? Heart diseases. It's more specific. Did you have to make an effort in trying to put simple words in? No, it just happens automatically. All you gotta do is make sure it's descriptive, formal, specific, and it addresses the real thing, the cardiologist understanding heart diseases. I'll give you an example of where this presents a problem in self writing. Let's say the topic is about building a gym or a theater in your town. Which one would you prefer? You preferred in task two, let's build a gym. Now, a sentence that I see very commonly, it is something I see repeatedly and the reasoning is so weak here. The reasoning is we have lots of gyms already, so we don't need more. That's it. That's the reasoning. How do you expect to score nicely on vocabulary or even task response in this case? Instead, you have to be specialized or specific. Talk about your local town. In our local town, we need to build a gym for ages, this to this, so this is specific, in order to advance formal language, in order to advance their health desires and goals, at the same time making sure 
the number of health-related diseases, especially obesity, specific, specialized, are reduced. And this is all professional, okay? So remember to keep it more descriptive, specialized, and professional or formal. Now, let's have a look at the last part, which is an important review. I'm gonna go over all of these in detail. Understand the context, make sure it is appropriate to the situation, and balance formality. This is kind of the same thing. There are informal emails you have to write, sometimes in task one, self writing, which are not many. Mostly you get formal, so you want to use the formal language. But when it is an informal email, make sure it's in formal language, make sure you have expressions, and you use words like awesome, what's up, hey, how's it going? But it's rare you would get that. Mostly you get formal language in task one. Task two is mainly formal. And the next one says, ensure clarity while you use advanced vocabulary. Make sure your message remains clear. A big problem for people who try to make vocab advanced is they overcomplicate it. If you're unsure about the vocab, use the basic versions. The most important thing is you get your writing clear and correct. And especially if you're struggling with grammar, fix that first, then move on to vocab. Don't jump to vocab too quick. If you're having grammar mistakes, you can send us your writings for free feedback. Email is in the description. We'll evaluate you. We'll also evaluate your vocabulary and tell you your score. Next thing is expand your vocabulary. Now in our course, which is again in the description, you have 1000 words this time for self pip writing and speaking. If you learn those words, you can easily plug and play them in your writing and speaking. Check that out in the word list in the course that is highly useful and also keep learning vocabulary wherever you can with word lists with tv shows and movies finally practice precision choose words that precisely convey your intended meaning avoid vague terms when you have a more specific word available once again this relates to how you're explaining things this would really depend on the scenario you are using these vague words that are confusing the meaning and ultimately making the sentence confusing and incorrect or inappropriate you lose marks the best way to rule this out is to comment down below submit your writings in the comments i'll give you feedback i'll try to answer every comment i promise and this is going to be completely free then you will know your score and know if you want more preparation or not guys that's it for today's video please like share and subscribe we'll talk very soon and do more lessons on how you can achieve a clb 10.